in the name of the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There are some stories that speak for itself. Father Jonathan and I were just talking a few weeks ago about how the preacher can actually get in the way of some of the best scripture stories in the Bible. Yet, we have to still give a sermon. And what do we do? And a great example is the Easter story, a story within itself. The story of John the Baptizer. The reading of the other Christmas story, John 1. Remember John 1 we read? In the beginning is the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. No commentary needed, because it speaks for itself. We love the great story of the birth of Jesus. Mary and Joseph having to travel to Bethlehem, and we're biting our nails to see if they make it. And when they do, they find out there's no room at the end. However, despite the fear and the stress of Joseph and Mary in a busy world, God still came into the world to save it. We love the story of the shepherds, the first to be called witnesses. And today we celebrate telling another one of those great stories, the story of the Epiphany. The story of the Magi, is also known as the wise men. The Epiphany story does not need any help from the preacher because it speaks for itself. It's a story about the world being invited to be a witness to the Incarnation. It's about seeking. It's about finding. It's about giving. It's about witnessing. It's about sharing. It's about a God that loved us so much that He came into the world to save us from sin and save us from ourselves. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn it, but to save it. And therefore, I will do my best not to get in the way of this incredible story. But I'll tell you, I sure do love telling the same incredible stories year after year. Because again, this is our story. A story that we have been brought into. So like gathering around the fire and listening to one of our favorite stories, let's listen to it once again, the story of the Epiphany. As you know, the story is about the traveling wise men. We actually know very little about these visitors, but the Bible tells us they came from the east to Jerusalem. Popular myth calls them astrologers, which could be a good possibility. This region at the time was very advanced in astronomy with tools and mapping. It is generally accepted that the Magi were priestly class from the Persia, once a mighty country where modern Iran and Iraq are now located. A side note to the history, a little church history, you know I love to talk about it. It is said that in the second century, a church father named Tertullian suggested that these men were kings because of an Old Testament reading that predicted that kings would come to worship the Christ. Tertullian also concluded that there were three kings based on the number of gifts mentioned, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As the story goes, the wise men traveled towards a bright star on a trip that would have taken them several months. Some astronomers today, they believe that what the wise men may have seen, that bright star, was actually two planets and not a star at all. But remember, they don't know this yet. They know that just a couple, they know that just within a couple of years difference, that the fact that there was a fact that Saturn and Jupiter actually aligned and would have made an extremely bright star. But get this, Saturn, which is a star for the king. Jupiter is the star for Israel. And so you see King and Israel lining up. Well, that could make some sense. We all know. So as the story continued, the wise men get to an area near Bethlehem. Naturally, of course, would seek the newborn king where the newborn king would live. The residence of the current king of the Jews, Herod. Makes sense. But get this, Herod's fort or palace is actually on a high mountain. 
just outside of a town called Bethlehem, just three miles away. They were close. So naturally, when they get there, they announce to the palace that they are here to see the newborn king of the Jews. The Bible says that Herod became fearful and that all Jerusalem feared with him for good reason. Remember, Herod is a bit of a nut. Killed a couple of his own kids because he was scared they were trying to take his throne. He doesn't play around. And when he fears, people die. You did not want someone like Herod to be fearful. Uh, fear leads to self-centeredness. Fear leads to shutting out others. Fear can lead to selfishness. Fear can cause a lack of good judgment. Fear can cause us to be blind to a whole picture. Fear can cause us to act out in negative ways, and Herod will. So when the Magi come to Herod searching for the newborn king, he is quick to play along. But don't be fooled. He is fearful. He called together his scholars who tell Herod where the Messiah could be found in the town of Bethlehem, down at the bottom of the mountain. After talking to his own scholars, Herod goes back to the Magi to find out the exact time the star appeared. After they tell him the time, Herod sends the wise men out to Bethlehem and told them to go and search for the child. And as soon as you find him, come back and report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. The wise men continued their journey back over to Bethlehem, again just a couple of miles away. Scripture tells us that they continued to follow the star until the star suddenly stopped over Jesus. And there they find Jesus in a house. And there they pay Him homage. The pre the pre uh, they give Him presents and gifts, or they present Him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The first gift was gold. Gold signifies Jesus' kingly role. And what's more fitting for a king than gold? The second gift was frankincense. Frankincense was an ingredient used by the priests of the temple in worship to blend with the smell of the sacrifice, showing Jesus' priestly role. And the third gift was myrrh. In Jesus' time, only wealthy people used myrrh to embalm their dead. I don't know this at all, but I've often wondered if somehow the wise men were told in a dream of knowing the real mission of the newborn king and knew that Jesus would die for the sins of the world, that he would be the king, the priest, and he will die for his people. The story continues that after a dream, the wise men were told not to return to Herod, but to go home by another way, and so they do. Herod is outraged. He orders the killing of all male children two years and younger in the land. But Jesus, Mary, and Joseph flee to Egypt until Herod dies. Think about this. Herod, who had his own text, his own scholars, telling him everything about the Messiah, allowed his own fear, selfishness, and self-desire to prevent him from seeing God the flesh. How sad. So what about us? What about us? What is it that we are actually seeking? What is it we really want to seek in our lives? What is it we want to seek on our path to Christ? If we are not on the path to seek Christ, what is standing in our way that prevents us seeking Him. Could it be that we seek the fear because of what I would call drama in the world? Because that fear and drama we like because we know how to react to it? Like Herod did? Like we can do? Or do we seek control or what I would call false control because it makes us feel better or makes us feel that we are actually in charge like Herod did, like we can do, like we've done or do we seek the Messiah, even if it takes us on a path that we don't understand, a path that makes us nervous or fearful, a path that doesn't make any sense, or a path that doesn't look familiar? The truth, I'm sure, is this is how the wise men felt 
when they were told to continue their, their journey. They had not truly finished their journey and had to get back on the right path again that didn't make sense to them. But once and then again, after fighting and seeing the baby, they're told in a dream to go on another path that they may not quite have understood. But we need to have the trust like the wise men. They had trust by following the star. They trusted in the instructions that they needed to get back to the right path when they found out that their quest was not complete. They trusted following the star even though it was now leading them on an unex to a very unexpected place. Not a palace like they were expecting, but instead a small, simple house with Jesus in it. See, Jesus can be in the most unexpected places in our lives. We just have to trust in it. Here is the good news. And I always tell you there's always good news in Jesus Christ. The star, the light of Christ is waiting to lead you. This is a new year, a new decade, and a new day. If you've been following the star of Christ, keep going. Keep going, my friends. If you've been away from the star for a while, come back home. If you've been following your own path and your lost trust in God and follow the star that is the right path for you. If your path has been in the dark, allow the star, the light of Christ, to illuminate it so that you can see what's before you. If at any time we fall, fumble, fail, or lost, look to the star. Look to the light of Christ. For Jesus, for Jesus is there. Jesus is is waiting. When we truly follow Christ, even if we get off the path, we need to get back on it. Remember that even the wise men moved off the called path because they suddenly had their eye on the palace and no longer on the star. The palace made sense. Bethlehem did not. So who can blame them? We go with what we know. But did the wise men give up? No. They were open and they listened. After learning and hearing the words of the scholars of the newborn king, they got back on the path that God called them on in the first place. And it's the same with all of us. When we find ourselves on the wrong, on the wrong or lost path, we need to get on the path that we have been called on by focusing on the star, the light of Christ, through worship, prayer, and love. Because like the wise men seeking the king, they found out that at the end of their journey, that Christ was there all along. All along. After they found the Christ, they gave all they had. They laid down their gifts before him. And we are to lay down our gifts that God has given us. After they found Jesus in their life in a dream, they were told to go on a new path. And so they trusted what they were told. They took God's path, not Herod's. We are called to do the same. When we discover, discover Christ or rediscover Christ in our lives, we need to walk a new path that we have been called on. On this holy night, we need to remember what the epiphany is about, what the Magi discovered. It's about seeking, finding, giving, witnessing, sharing. So on this holy night, let's go and do the same. Amen.